What's the perfect gift? Drinks. Does someone do you a solid, like dog sitting while you were on vacation? Send a drink. Did that friend finally try stand up instead of just talking about how good they'd be at it? Annoying, but send a drink anyway. At least they tried, and that counts for something. For just because, congrats, or thinking of you gifts, there's one move that works every time. You guessed it, send a drink. Send beer, wine, and spirits with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. To whoever, wherever, and whenever, for whatever. And do it from the palm of your hands by downloading the Drizzly app or going to drizzly.com slash gifts. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com slash gifts to gift drinks. Right. So to sum up, drinks. Gift them. Cool. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Is it time for brunch talk? Yes, it's time for brunch talk. (laughs) Should make a jingle. (laughs) <laughs> brunch talk, brunch talk. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But we are <laughs> oh, here <laughs> to discuss your dating conundrums over brunch because it's Sunday or whenever you're listening to this. It's yeah. always a good time for brunch. And we enjoy answering your questions. It's true. Make your pancakes on a Sunday evening. It doesn't matter. We're here for you. We're here to do the brunch talk, whatever time it is. <laughs> And we are here for this person who wrote in with this question, which is, can someone show love and make you feel amazing, but doesn't want anything real with you? More details. I've been dating someone for the last year, and they made me feel loved, safe, respected, and admired. I saw myself building a life with this person, but he's moving, and he's made it clear that our relationship will be over then. Was I just imagining that this was real, or did he ever have feelings for me? Whatever you feel in a relationship around someone, it's your truth. There is no debating that. And I used to like debate my previous self a lot. Like, was it real? Did I really Mm -hmm. feel these things? Yeah. In the moment, you absolutely feel these things. And yes, it's real. But also, yes, and someone (laughs) could show you all of this and make you feel these incredible feelings and not want to be in a full-fledged relationship with you or give you everything that you want. It doesn't diminish their feelings towards you or how they treat you. It's just that you want different things. Yeah, I think also there's something big in this one, too, of this person is moving. And of course, we don't know where they're moving. They could be moving down the street or they could be moving Mm -hmm. to a different country. If they're moving down the street, then maybe, yeah, they weren't really looking for something real and it's excuse. That's not my guess from this. But if they're moving to a place, it's so easy to think, well, if they wanted to be with me, they would move mountains to be with me. We could do long distance. We can make it work. We could do whatever. (laughs) I definitely was that naive at one point. Like I remember when an ex of mine moved back to the UK, I was like, why can't we just do long distance? And, you know, we did kind of try and he was right. It didn't really work. It was hard. Because initially his feeling was like, I don't want to do long distance. And it felt like we weren't in a relationship at all. Like we were just like updating on life. And some people can make long distance work and other people know that that's not the relationship they want. So I don't think it necessarily means that this person like didn't have feelings for you and didn't want to be with you. They just might be realistic about the situation also. Again, hard to know fully because we don't know where they're moving, but so often we personalize a lot of this stuff. And while it's unfortunate that it didn't work out, sometimes it's not that personal is what I've learned. Not every relationship has to last. And if it doesn't last, doesn't mean that it's a failed relationship. There's some amazing relationships that can be time boxed and you can get out before you turn the relationship into something unrealistic. So when you can recognize that there's an expiration date, you might actually make the relationship even more amazing because you know that the time is running out and that you have limited opportunities to see each other. Again, not every relationship has to last for it to be a quality relationship. Let's stop trying to (laughs) drag out relationships that aren't meant to be for the long haul, but for six months, three months, three 
three days, eight hours, whatever. Enjoy the shit out of that time and then let it go. Set it free and let it live forever (laughs) in your memory as such a beautiful experience you had. It's so fascinating to me how different we look at relationships versus jobs. Uh It's like relationships. We expect everyone to last a lifetime. That's how you measure success against a good relationship. But jobs, we're always job hopping. We're always moving on to what's next because we realize like it was good for whatever time period, but we're ready for something different. And I'm not saying like you shouldn't want the relationship that lasts for the long haul, but sometimes there are circumstances that make things not and that doesn't devalue your time there like if you had a job for a year you wouldn't be like that was a waste of time it was a stepping stone to probably your next job you probably learned a lot you probably enjoyed the time while you were there how do you start looking at this relationship as that because from what we're hearing like you're questioning because they don't want to like pursue something after they move does that devalue what you had And I don't think it does. No, definitely doesn't. And relationships just change dynamic once you move away, once you're not in the same location anymore. Sometimes you're just like, yeah, I'm willing to take that risk. But both people have to be willing to take that risk. And if one party is like one foot in, one foot out, it's not going to work. It doesn't work. (laughs) Both people need to be 110% in the game. And if you're not aligned on that, it's 100% going to fail. So just remember that the dynamic will change. And no matter how how strong your feelings are for each other, they will change once the person moves away. That's right. That's how humans work. If you're not physically around each other's energy, it's going to evolve into something a little different. And I think too, sometimes it's based on your past experience. Like my ex, when he didn't want to do long distance, it's because he had done it before and realized it wasn't really what he wanted. I hadn't. And I thought like, oh, you know, like the rom-com effects, like (laughs) we can make it work. You know, who cares if it's like three different time zones away? It's okay. Like we can make it work. If it's meant to be, nothing will get in our way. And then I realized like that was not the case. And if you asked me again to do that, I probably wouldn't do it. Because even if I like was so crazy about the person, I would either figure out a way to move with them or have to let it go because I don't want to be in a relationship with my phone. And that's what it ends up being. Mm. Again, some people can make it work. I'm not saying you can't, but I don't think this person, like who knows what their background is with long distance relationships. I don't know if it's always like because of you is the reason they don't want to try to make it work. You know, the saying people come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime, and they don't have to be in that lifetime bucket. They can just be there for a reason. I think about, oh, in this relationship, I learn how to love in a way that I never did before. Great. It's an awesome reason to be in that relationship (laughs) where you learn how to be more selfish in the way you take care of yourself in a relationship. Whatever it may be, you're learning something. There's a reason for them. It's not time wasted. And if it has to be time boxed, it's time boxed. But it's only going to make the time you have together that much more precious and valuable. Well, before we keep going into this, let's hear a message from our sponsors. We are so excited to share with you our new podcast, Exit Interview. Dates don't usually end with a satisfaction survey, and yet we rate everything in our lives, from Uber drivers to local coffee shops. So why don't we do the same thing when dating? We're here to conduct the ultimate romance review, featuring daters hungry for love who have agreed to call up old flames to gather honest feedback. Welcome to Exit Interview. He upgraded himself to business class while I was in economy. <laughs> Wait, wow. What? There's feedback that will make you cringe. She could be a little bit hard-headed, like not reading the writing on the wall. And feedback that will make you swoon. But she said that she had feelings for you. I had no idea. Really? <laughs> and maybe you'll learn a thing or two yourself about how you can be a better dater, lover, or partner. Obviously, like, knew I was going to learn something. I didn't expect this. Welcome to Exit Interview. Listen to Exit Interview on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
I want to get your take on this, UA. Like, if you're in this situation, how do you start to come out of it that this was a waste of time or was it real? Like, all those thoughts, because I think that can be really damaging. I think one is just having a reality check. Sit down and be like, okay, if we're still dating right now and we're in this long distance relationship, what would my day look like today? Probably not that great. Just having that reality (laughs) check. And then the things that you say when you are really into someone, did you mean it? Like, I would move to that place. (laughs) I would find a job (laughs) in that city or that country, wherever they move to. No, you're not. (laughs) Let's, Let's just be realistic. Okay. I would leave my family and friends to be with this love of my life. Like, no, stop it. These are movie lines. They don't yes. really exist. So it's good to have a reality check, like what my day to day would look like right now. And is that the life I want to subscribe to? Probably not. And that's your reality check. And then you can go back in your memory and swim in the happy memories and revisit some of the interactions and really enjoy that. But know that that was in the past. 100% agree. Like, I mean, I know this person, so they've been dating for a year, but that still is a lot to uproot your life. And again, if both parties want to make it work, I think that's really different than one being reluctant. It just makes it a lot harder to actually build something if that's the case. If both parties are all in and we're moving our lives and we're doing this, very different story. But you wouldn't be writing in if that was the case. So we'll put that aside for now. Right. But I think like, actually taking inventory too of what was it about this person that you really liked? Like what was good? What's something you want in a future partner? That's how it's not time wasted too when you're learning. Also, what wasn't working? Maybe it is that they weren't all in or like they weren't willing to fight for it. And you want someone that's super committed, that's gonna say, fuck it, let's do it. Let's build a life together. Like that's good knowledge to know because the next time you meet someone, you're gonna look for that quality. And that's why I think all these experiences are beneficial as they build on each other. And that's how eventually you find the right person because through trial and error, through all these like mini relationships to full-fledged relationships, that's what you learn what works and what doesn't for you. Yeah. And remember, sometimes we forget there's a difference between a relationship and a partnership. And a relationship is you're finding ways to relate to each other. You're engaged romantically with each other. In a partnership, you make decisions together because you're building a life Mm -hmm. together. And in what you wrote in as our listener, you had a relationship, not a partnership. This moving away situation was not a decision that you made together because you weren't planning on building this life together. So Mm -hmm. if we can just box it in to it was a great relationship, but not a partnership, and I'm looking for a partnership, then you can get yourself out of the what if, was this the right decision, et cetera, et cetera. It's more like it was just not the right type of relationship for me because I'm looking for a partnership. Or maybe it was at the time and now you've learned that you want more. And that's like also okay, right? Like it's not that you did anything wrong. It's all a stepping stone to something ultimately that's going to serve you. Wonderful. Thanks for writing in with that question. It's a great question. And Ugh, for yes. all of you listening, we know you have more questions for us. You always have more questions. <laughs> you can email us hello at datablepodcast.com. Keep them covered. DM us on Instagram at Datable Podcast is the handle, or you can leave us a rating and review in Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars, please. And then in the body of the review, you can ask us your question and we will bump it up to the top of the queue. Yep. And make sure to subscribe to Datable so you get all the brunch talks every week, Sunday morning, afternoon, depending on where you are. (laughs) It's in the brunch range, regardless of where you are. Maybe if you're in the UK, maybe it's not. But anyways, you're with us. But we also have our long form Wednesday episodes that we talk to guests or even deep dive on some topics. We go deep. We go deeper for the full hour with the two of us too. So make sure to subscribe so you get everything right away. And for now, enjoy your brunch and we'll see you next week. Okay.
See you next week. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes in our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Stay dateable.